Yo, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to another video. And this we're gonna go over uh, my best bets, my lock of the week, my underdog picks that I like on this card. I'm also gonna give you guys my parlays that I like on this card. And uh, make sure you guys su subscribe to the channel. We're getting close to 3k subscribers. Appreciate each and every one of you guys that hit the sub button that have been, that have been supporting the live streams, uh, that have been supporting uh, my videos. That um, watch these videos every week. I mean, I appreciate you guys a lot. And um, uh, it's, it's almost like 1 a.m. It's almost like 3 a.m. For, for me right now, 3 a.m. in the morning. So my son a little bit tired right now. Um, I apologize for that. I wasn't going to be able to get this video out later. Uh, tomorrow, I got some stuff to do tomorrow. So I'm here in the morning uh, making this video for you guys. So I want to do this video for UFC Noche. And uh, I think it's going to be a really good card. The last couple of weeks have been phenomenal for us, man. Like we are coming off a five card streak right now for uh, Bellator, UFC, uh, Vegas 97, um, the contender series today, earlier today. I mean, last night, I mean, not today, it was last night. It was a really good card for us. So also UFC, uh, like the last two UFC fight night cards have been pretty solid for us. So I'm hoping to keep the momentum going. And uh, let's, let's talk about the lock of the week now for lock of the week for UFC um lock of the week for ufc noche we're gonna go with the sugar sean o'malley and i'm gonna go with sugar sean o'malley um i think he's gonna go out there get the job done i like him to get the kill here i think he's gonna get a finish in this fight man um now obviously marav's gonna bring crazy pressure out there the guy can wrestle non-stop for five rounds and obviously so that could be a problem but um i think it's not hard preparing for a guy like marav um, he's going to be robbed away, Marab strikes. I think um, now he's going to be able to find some shots out there. He's going to be able to counter Marab as, as he comes in with a takedown attempt. I think he's going he's gonna to be keep, he's going to be waiting for Marab to shoot and he's going to time a knee up the middle. He's also like, there's a lot of things you can do out there with a guy like Marab. Obviously, he's probably going to want to fight at space at range. He's probably going to want to keep the range. And Marab doesn't really give you a lot of um, space to keep range. But um, I think Amali is going to be able to land the counters. This guy's one of the best distance management strikers out there. I um, mean, he's one of the best guys at keeping range and um, managing distance overall. So um, give me Amali for lock of the week. Uh, last week's lock of the week was Brady. So he went out there, got the job done. Um, so I think Amali is going to go out there. And uh, he's gonna put a, he's gonna get a crazy KO or like, I mean, might as well take him money line. I think he can even win by this. Isn't I wouldn't be shocked if he uh, hurts Marab uh, a couple of rounds, uh, maybe drops him or like lands a cleaner shot than Marab shoots a takedown, controls him on the ground. I could definitely see O'Malley winning. I I see a bunch of uh, I see I see a lot of past victory for Marab. I mean, from O'Malley, um, him out striking Marab on the feed. Um, Winning rounds like that, or him just knocking on Rob. So obviously the guy is more dangerous here is Amali. Rob hasn't really finished anyone in the top ten that I can remember. I don't think he finished anyone in the top ten. He's only got like one finish in the FC or maybe two finishes if I can remember correctly. And I'd be really shocked if he goes out there and finishes Amali. So I don't see that happening, right? So give me the more dangerous guy here. He's not getting my plus money anymore. Um but I've been picking a Mali for the last couple months since uh, I heard about this fight. So I'm going to go to Mali for lock of the week this week. All right, guys, let's talk about the uh, best bets now for um, for the card. I'm going to go with Rojas Jr. I mean, does he get a submission? Probably more likely it's going to be a submission. But um, I feel like it could be, uh, could be a KO. I mean, KO is like plus 500. Um, I like him as a parlay piece too. I think you can parlay even as a finish prop. Uh, obviously, bet online they don't let you parlay that right now. Um, they don't let you parlay props overall. I mean, bet on bet online, but um, when DraftKings they drop props and stuff like that, you can probably take um, a Rosa Junior finish uh, as a parlay piece. I mean, money line's like minus eight hundred now. Like I, I, I took him at minus seven hundred. I think I don't think it's bad, even at this line. I definitely see him winning this fight. I mean, this is a good matchup for him. He's gonna be starting out the card for the Mexican people. And I don't see uh, Rosa Jr. dropping the ball here. Um, I think he's uh, he's getting he's gonna get a lot better out there as he ages. <clears throat> Let's talk about the next fight now. Next, I mean, next uh, best bet on the card is gonna be Torres Manuel Torres finish only. So um, I already got Manuel Torres. Uh, not getting plus money anymore. 
but um, you're getting this finish only prop for Manuel Torres. So what this means, if you guys are not familiar with finish only, what this means is that um, the only like if as long as he's the only one that goes out there gets a finish, you're gonna cash this bet. So if he gets finished in this fight, which I don't think is gonna happen, that's the only way he loses money. Uh, only, that's the only way you're gonna lose your money. I mean, if this goes a distance, you get you get a refund on your bet. Um, so. At this point, I mean, the money line is really similar to the, to, I mean, the finish, the finish only prop. Um, so I think uh, you're probably better off going with the finish only at this point. Because um, I obviously think he's the more dangerous guy out there. And obviously, I like picking the guys that are, have more finishing upside out there. Unless I'm, unless I'm really confident that he can go. I think he can use this fight, can go the distance, he can win also. If um, So I'm not really worried about that. But um, more than likely, he wins. I think Torres is going to win. He's going to win by finish. So the finish only prop seems pretty solid here, in my opinion. Um, I think he's gonna go out there and get a submission or like a, a KO. I mean, KO probably maybe rocks him on the feet, maybe gets goes for a submission. I could definitely see uh submission club and sub. Like he's I think he's got the better BG overall. He's more slicker on the ground. And obviously he's got power on the feet also with his boxing. <clears throat> so give me Torres finish only as the second best bet on the card. Next best bet on the card is going to be Alexa Grosso. Give me the younger uh, fighter in her prime. <coughs> and uh, I think she should have won her last fight. That was 2-2 heading into the fifth round. I gave I gave Grosso the fifth round. I'm not, not, not a lot of people can agree, agree with me there. But um, I, I honestly think she did enough to win that uh, fifth round. Um, obviously, it wasn't a 10-8. Um, should have been a 10-9 for Grosso. Um, the judge that scored that fifth round at ten eight is a is an EDA. I feel like, yeah, I like Grasso here. I think uh, he's more in her prime right now. Um, it's not gonna help with Sevchenko getting older. He's uh, she's almost like thirty. I think she's like thirty eight now, so it's not gonna help her case. And Grasso's been out there hurting her. I mean, she finished her in the first fight. Um, then she went out there knocked on Valentina Shevchenko in the second fight. I almost put her away. So. Obviously, I think this is her confidence is going to be through the roof here. So, as long as she's working that taking defense, that's the only thing I'm worried about. Grouse. So, hopefully, she's been drilling that taking defense in camp. And I think she can get this one done. Next best bet on the card is going to be Diego Lopez this season. So, can he finish Ortega? Maybe. But I think Ortega is one of the toughest fighters to finish out there, man. Not a lot of people can put put Ortega away. I mean, so I think I think this is gonna be a barn burner. It's gonna be a back and forth fight. But yeah, I do like uh, Diego Lopez. This isn't here. I think it's gonna go uh, the distance. Um, I mean, he's probably gonna be live for a first round finish. If he can't finish Ortega in the first round. I think he's gonna kind of he's gonna be patient out there. He knows he's close to getting a title shot right now. Tiporio is talking about Lopez also, so he's right there, man. Um, if he goes out there, beats uh, Ortega, even by the season, I think uh, he's it's probably more likely to get a title shot over Mozart than Mozart is right now, uh, in my opinion. So I could be wrong, but I feel like uh, Lopez goes out there, beats Ortega. If he gets a finish, he's getting a title shot for sure. If he goes out there, beats uh, Ortega in a really good back and forth fight and the fight of the night, I still see him getting a title shot for Moser, unless Moser goes out there, finishes the former champion um, uh, Sterling, which I don't think is going to happen. Even though I do think Moser is going to go out there, beat uh, Sterling, but I don't think he's going to finish him. So give me Lopez, this season, plus 200. Honestly, not bad. I picked him by this season over uh, Dan Ige because um, I didn't think he's going to finish him. And he couldn't finish San Diego. I mean, not, not a lot of people can finish San Diego. I mean, even the times we have seen Ortega again finished, it was a corner stop is in, in a five-round matchup against Max Holloway. And obviously that fluke, he, uh, he broke his uh, arm in that other fight, in the Yair fight. Um, but uh, give me Lopez. I think Lopez is going to get this one done. By the season. I'd be, I'd be, I, I, even though like I want to see him finish uh, Ortega, but I know how I know how tough Ortega is to get out of there. He's been in some absolute bangers for five rounds. I mean, against Volkanovski, against some other guys, Max Holloway. The guy's really tough to put away, and this is only the round matchup. Next best bet on the card is going to be Jasmine Haragui. So I like Haragui as a part of the piece here. I just don't see her losing this fight, man. This is a tailor-made matchup for her. She's obviously the better striker. Um, 
has better boxing, more volume out there, phenomenal cardio. She's going to have the crowd behind her. So every time she lands a shot out there, the crowd's going to be uh, going crazy. And um, obviously, um, even if it's a close fight, I mean, that's the way the judges get swayed a lot with the crowd cheering for you. The only reason, like, I'm, I'm scared to take the decision at minus 200 is because he could finish uh, Souza. It's not like it can't happen, man. Souza's been finished before. She's been hurt to the body before um, outside the UFC, so it could happen. I mean, I think Colonel Losi finished her. Um, I don't know. That, I, mean, I think that was also the UFC. And she got finished by Queenie Silva recently. Obviously, Queenie Silva's got high level BJJ, so I don't see how do we get in, getting a submission here, but um, I do think that... Um, <clears throat> So you can win this fight, and I'm pretty confident. Even a minus four fifty-five, kind of chalky for the OBMA, but um, I do, I do like leaning with Hardegui here, than taking the over or um taking Hardegui by the which is only like minus two hundred. If it was like minus one thirty, I would take that over money line, but um, I I like the money line even at minus four fifty-five. She's the way more. She's gonna be landing way more volume out there, and I don't see Souza just knocking her out. And that's the only win condition that Souza has out there. She's not getting taken down. I agree. I agree. taking defense is solid. All right, now I'm underdog of the night. I mean, so this is underdog for a reason, but I do feel like he can get this one done. Edgar Chavez, man, Edgar Chavez, plus one ninety, a guy in full camp, Mexican fighter fighting on Mexican Independence Day. And UFC Noche, uh, UFC Noche, Joshua Van coming back after a KO loss two months ago. Um, there's a lot, of, there's a lot going for Chavez here, man. And look at this absolute Chad, man. He's not losing to man. I feel like I'm a big fan of Joshua Van, but um, I definitely would have liked to see him take more time, <laughs> time off. Yeah, my throat's a little messed up right now. I've been, I've been, I was live earlier for Dana White Connect Series. I was live with AJ with the uh, experts earlier. Make sure you guys go check out her uh, breakdowns. So I've been live for like a long time. I mean, so my voice is kind of messed up right now. I apologize for that. But I really want to get this video out today because um, I know I probably wouldn't be able to get it done later in the week. Yeah, I'm giving Shiraz. I think Shiraz is going to be more dangerous out there. He's definitely in, like the bigger guy also. I don't think striking is as good as um, Joshua, like as Joshua Van. Joshua Van has got cleaner boxing, but we've seen Joshua Van get dropped out there. Borja dropped him in the first round. Chavez has got some power, man. Uh, even his uh, Tatsura Tyra fight, he gave Tatsura Tyra a tough fight out there. He had uh, Tyra locked in a submission in the third round. Almost had that off. I mean, the timer ran out for lucky for Tyra. This guy's tough, man. He, he's fought some tough guys. Also, the UFC fought Jesus Aguilar, who's really dangerous. Went to the fifth round with Jesus Aguilar. So, I think Chavez at, at this line, I mean, it's worth the stop, I feel like. At this at this line in, on Mexican Independence Day. I mean, like, it's just cause if he lands some big shots, has some big moments out there, I could definitely see the judges just giving him the even decision out there. So, at this line, I, I don't think it's a bad end on this card. Let's talk about the parallels on this card now. Make sure you guys hit the like button and make sure you guys subscribe, man. If you guys enjoy these uh, best bets, lock of the week videos and the parlay videos. And now let's talk about the parlays now. The, so the parlays are aligned and uh, safest to risk his parlays. So the first one's going to be Rosa Jr. Um, plus Harigui. And the over two and a half rounds in the Joshua Man versus Chavez plus 106. I think that's pretty solid, safe. And the one that I like is Amali, Rosa Jr., Harigui, money line, plus 139. I think that's going to cash because Malak Levy is Amali. He's winning. Rosa Jr. is winning. Harigui is going to win also. And the risky one that's, that's like not, I'm not as crazy confident is Lopez, Grasso. Um, I think that's a solid uh, Lobo Gym MMA parlay right there. They both train together. I mean, so I see both of them winning. I think that one can cash also. Let's go with a uh, little bit of a D-Gen parlay. Roja Jr., Aragui, Lopez, Amali, plus 279, 278, I mean. So, pretty solid overall. Like, I think these, I could see most of these parlays cashing. I'm pretty confident the first two. And I'm pretty confident the third one, too. I mean, Lopez wins. I think Ross is going to win for sure. Lopez one's kind of scared me because his cardio could be an issue maybe in the later round. But uh, lucky for Lopez, it's only a three-round fight, right? So... Good for that's I think that plays it for that plays into Lopez's side. 
All right, guys, there you guys goes. We got the best, best video done for this week. And um, I'll see you guys. Um, I'll see you guys in the... Yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one, man. Take it easy, guys. I want to thank all the subscribers, all the members on the channel, man. Big shout out to all the members um, that have uh, been supporting the channel. I appreciate you guys, man. And um, we've been having a pretty good good year this year. I mean, the picks have been pretty solid. Um, the bets have been pretty solid. And um, I'm hoping to keep it rolling, guys. Uh, hopefully, this is a good card for all of us. I, I wish you guys all the best on all your bets. And I uh, hope you guys make a lot of money on this card. And uh, be responsible with your bets, man. Don't go crazy. Only bet as much as you're willing to lose because that's the one thing you got to learn. There's no guarantees in this game. I mean, so uh wish you guys all the best man thanks for watching and i'm gonna i'm, gonna, I'm, I'm signing off later guys take it easy later